everything is also narrated by a ghost. Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. For January, for the Buzzwordathon, the prompt was books with the word dream in the title. I picked out of my stacks of books, Strangers with the Same Dream by Allison Pick. I purchased this book at Salvation Army sometime last year. I don't remember exactly when. I had high hopes for this. This was about Jewish pioneers in Israel in the early 1900s, I think. Yeah, 1921. It's historical fiction. It's about something I don't really know much about, so I was interested to read about it and learn a little more. I had a really pretty cover, or it has, obviously. Uh, unfortunately, this book didn't didn't really do it for me. It's by a Canadian author, and it's actually printed by Nope Canada, so like the Canadian printing version of that publisher. Uh, something funny about this book, so this happens sometimes, Salvation Army books. This book is actually autographed by the author, which I did not realize initially. And it's not just autograph, it's like personally made out. It says, for Rick, with huge thanks for all your help, Allison Pick. And I looked it up and that does in fact appear, like obviously I can't, that doesn't look like Allison Pick, doesn't look like anything, but I Googled her autograph and I'm pretty sure that's what this is. So this was like a book that she actually like personally made out to Rick as a thank you for something. And it somehow ended up at the Salvation Army. Not to call out Rick, but uh, yeah, he did that. But anyway, mo moving on to the book. There's a lot going on here, and at the same time, not, not that much. The book is split into thirds, and each third is kind of narrated by a different character, and it goes over the same events from that character's perspective. So you're getting the same story, three times and each time you learn a little bit of new information. In addition to all of that, everything is also narrated by a ghost of one of the main characters that's like looking back at everything that happened. You find out who the ghost is pretty early. Um, I, I don't know that it was necessary to have that going on, especially when we already kind of have like the gimmick of the same story from three different sides to then also have like a ghost narrator throughout the whole thing. Um, di didn't love that choice. I didn't love the way the story was told anyway. It just, we weren't learning enough new information each time, I think to justify having the same story told three times. Uh, but starting off, the first narrator is Ida, and Ida is just, you know, she's just like one of the pioneers. She's She's got a romance going on with another character, and that's, that's about it for Ida. She's not all that relevant to the story. She's also the most likable of the characters, but I'm gonna have to talk about spoilers, so don't watch this if you have intents of reading this book, and if you really want to. I... I don't know if this is on anybody else's TBR, but if for some reason it is, skip over, don't watch the rest of this, because I'm going to have to spoil it. So the overall kind of event for the story is that a child dies and someone else dies too, and that person's the ghost. Um, the child death, you, you, can, you can see it early. So like I'm saying this is a spoiler, but by the end of Ida's section, it's not. Honestly, like halfway through Ida's section, so like the first 50 to 60 pages, it's becomes pretty clear that's what's going to happen. But Ida happens to be the one that was watching the child when she became injured. So I guess that's why Ida's story's there, but she's not really all that related to it anyway. Uh, the other two people that we hear from are David and Hannah, and David is the leader of the group, and Hannah is his wife, and they are the parents of the child that dies, whose name is Ruth. David is absolutely insufferable. His section is just difficult to read because of how unlikable he is. And it's right there in the middle of the book, by which point you pretty much already know everything that's happened. You know who the person that died is. You've got a pretty good idea if you can pick up on any clues whatsoever. You got a pretty good idea of why they're gonna die. And you're pretty certain that Ruth David and Hannah's child is going to die as a result of infection from this injury she gets while Ida was watching her. It's rough when we first see the story from Ida's perspective because 
she dies from what is probably a preventable infection if antibiotics existed at this point. Um, in David's, we get a little bit more. We get why Ida was watching Ruth in the first place, and it's because David is awful. In David's section, we, f we find out for certain that Ruth has died. Ugh, he's just awful. He's just, the whole time she's sick, he's off doing other stupid shit. So a lot of it's just boring, which is terrible to say, but it, you just don't learn that much, you know? In Ida's story, you kind of get the bare bones of what's going to happen. In David's story, David gets flushed out more as a character in some of the details, but he's so awful and unlikable that it's not enjoyable to read, and I didn't really care to know much about David. And then by the time we finally get to Hannah's story, Hannah is Ruth's mother, and Hannah is the one that is there with Ruth as she dies very slowly and very graphically and that is the part of this book that was just oh like I had to give it two stars because the right like it hurt me to read this I did not want to read this I didn't really want it I just wanted to like stop and put the book away and just call it a call it a no but I didn't I read it and I can't say that the writing was not skillfully done. I don't know. It went, it went from boring, 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 horrific, and then just kind of like this brief little climax where we find out exactly why and how the ghost person was murdered, and it's, it's, it's what you probably could have figured out way earlier in the book. So I was really let down by this book. Um, of all the types of stories you could have told in this setting, this one just, I feel like I really didn't learn all that much in terms of like the historical aspect, which is, you know, I, it's not like all historical fiction has to be super educational, but I, I was hoping this was going to be a little more so. A lot of the book was just very dull or taken up by unlikable people. And then there's just this terrible, slow, agonizing death of a child through the eyes of her mother, and I just, ugh, I didn't need it. I didn't need it. I could have skipped this one. I wouldn't recommend it, honestly. Like, there's gotta be better books about this time period, or sorry, about this subject. This book, like, maybe not want to, no. I, I can't imagine picking up anything else by this author. Sorry. So that was, that was kind of a fail. My upcoming book for February Words in the Deep Blue. The prompt was a book with a color in the title. This I anticipate to be a more lighthearted romance. So hopefully I'll have a better update for you guys next time. But that was January Buzzwordathon. Let me know in the comments below if you participate in Buzzwordathon or what your favorite books with the word dream in the title are or what I should have read instead of this. Thanks, I'll see you next time. Bye.